What's going on guys? Welcome to this very important lesson. So in this one, we're going to talk about a very interesting or simple code that I'm actually going to write for you guys. Um, basically, what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to create an indicator in front of you and just show it to you in action exactly how it works. Um, like what do I think about what do I go through when I'm like making these indicators and stuff like that. So we're basically gonna you're gonna see essentially an indicator being built live. Now what is this and what are we actually building? So what I want to do is I want to build an indicator that detects when there's a crossover between two technical average, uh, you know, technical indicators. One is a simple moving average. One is the exponential moving average. So, so again, there are two lines: exponential and moving exponential moving averages and a simple moving average. And we want to make sure that whenever these lines cross, we get a sign on the, you know, chart, just like that. You know. Nothing crazy, just a very simple one. Again, we're starting a very simple uh, code so you can actually see exactly how it works in action. So what I have for you here, again, is the chart and then I got the brand new, uh, you know, clean script in front of you. So we're just gonna start doing it, all right? So let's get started. So again, I got a brand new, nothing here. So let's get started. I'm just gonna give it a name. I'm gonna call this uh, EMA and MA crossover, all right? So. Just like that. So let's give it a, uh, well, let's start with the version, right? Or like, let's start with the indicator title. I'm just gonna say, I'm just giving a title and say, um, see EMA and MA crossover indicator. And we can also give it a short title. I'm just gonna do that because it's a pretty long one. Okay, short title. Uh, we're just gonna say EMA MA crossover, all right? So again, just want to use as many as uh, all these, uh, as many all as many as like the, the lessons that we've talked about and things we talked about in the past few modules and you know a section. So I'm just trying to put everything. All right. So the next one is that we want to decide if it's overlay or not. Obviously, this is going to be an overlay because MA simple average, simple moving average, and exponential moving average lines are always um, you know over the chart or the price line essentially, right? So we're just going to say overlay true. There you go. And uh, next one we're going to define is the time frame. So one of the things is that uh, with the exponential moving averages, uh, what we want to do is we want to make sure that every time we change the chart, the time frame changes with it. So one of the ways to do this is actually uh, the, do the time frame, add the time frame, you know, uh, variant here, and just like leave it empty. So that way, actually, it changes with the chart, which is really really cool. And then time frame gaps, we're going to leave that two true so essentially a time frame gap is what it does is it actually smooths out the uh, chart okay so it just smooths it out it makes it look better so that's that so we got our title or indicator like basics right so we got that going on so next one i'm going to do is i'm going to receive some data from the user so i'm just going to call this ema length so the idea with this is that E M A L E E L E N G H T. There you go. Just want to make sure I do it right. Okay, so the I, this is a variant of like a variable we're receiving, right? So I want to receive a number that we're going to use for the exponential moving average. So the length of the exponential moving average. I want user to actually define that. So we're just going to use an input, right? So we're gonna say input integer, that's gonna be, because it's just a whole number, we're gonna use an integer, all right? So we're just gonna say title equals, uh, we're gonna call this EMA length. There we go. Just give it a, uh, put it in quotation marks, there you go. All right, so that's that, right? And then we're gonna say minimum value, min val equals, uh, let's say 10, and max default value, is going to be 25. That's what I usually leave it to for the exponential moving average. And the max, we're gonna, we're not gonna do a max value because we're just let user, uh, you know, decide that. And then, so that's the first thing we're gonna receive from the uh, user, right? The next thing I'm gonna receive from the user is moving average length. Same thing, you know, MA length. All right. So we're gonna say equal input integer, and we're gonna open. We're gonna title this. Uh, we're going to say moving average length. Here we go. All right. So that's that. And min value equals 
um, let's say 20, and the default value equals 100. Again, so we're basically asking users to give me the give us the EMA or exponential moving average length that they want on the chart, and the MA length or a moving average length. All right, so that's pretty much it for the user data at least. So next step is we're gonna actually figure out the EMA and MA or exponential moving average and moving averages, all right? So we're just gonna say EMA, again, defining another variable, right? I'm gonna say this is TA, this is the exponential moving average, so I'm just gonna use the built-in function of the technical analysis, right? TA, EMA. So we're just gonna good, open it in parentheses so that we're gonna go based on the price, the close price, right? And we're gonna do EMA length because we, instead of just you know putting a number, because that's what we usually do, you just usually put a number, right? So in this case, we're just gonna use the number that a user is going to provide here, just like that. Next one is, uh, well, let's just give it a comment too, huh? So we're just gonna EMA and MA calculation. And then we're gonna give a comment here and say in asking user to provide the length there we go so just like that we're just commenting our code to make sure it's clean right so ma is the next one we want to calculate so we're going to say technical analysis ma there you go we're going to do close and what else we want we want to um well we're going to do ma length right so we need to put the ma length right here just like that so now Actually, sorry about that. It's simple moving average. Yeah, I was like, wait a minute, what's that? That's not uh, reading it. This is just what it basically what it is when you code, right? You just figure out problems. So, simple moving average, and we just you know figured it out. All right. So now we got our values, right? So now it's time to plot it. So we're just gonna comment it out again. Plot values. Perfect. So there are we have a few options. We can just plot the crossovers, right? Or one of the things I want, what I want to do is I just want to plot everything. I want to plot the moving average. I want to plot the exponential moving average, all that. And I just want to plot the, uh, uh, I want to plot the uh, crossovers too. So with that being said, we're just going to go ahead and plot everything. All right. So the first thing I'm going to plot is the moving average. So we're just going to say plot and we're going to say MA or the moving average, right? That's the, uh, the variable that we made. And we're going to say color equals we're just gonna say white. That's the color I wanna go with. And then for the moving average, for exponential moving average, I'm gonna use another one. I'm just gonna say plot and uh, parentheses, exponential moving average. That's again, this is the what we defined right here, right? I'm gonna say color equals color dot blue. Here we go. So that's our plot. Now, if I actually get rid of this right and if i actually plot this we're gonna have the lines at least going on here all right so let's actually add it to the chart so we can see it there you go so you got our lines right again at this point we don't have anything impressive we just have the exponential moving average and moving average lines so all right that's cool all right so let's go ahead and actually build this thing so the next thing or the last thing we're going to actually plot or uh, plot lines so let's just like give it some like you know good comments and then we're going to say plot uh the crossover so this is how you plot a crossover remember we talked about the mathematical and all that stuff this is how you actually you know use the in functions remember in the previous video when i was like talking about advanced plot functions and stuff like that i, I mentioned that you can actually uh, use uh you know do values like the functions directly inside a plot and that's what we're going to do actually for this one so i'm going to say plot okay and parentheses just give it a space it's fine either way so technical analysis we're going to do cross this is a technical analysis that you can actually use uh to uh cr to actually mark the cross between two uh, two lines or two values essentially. All right. So we're going to open a parentheses inside a parentheses. So the first thing we're going to do is the value source one, source two, source one, source two is EMA and MA, right? So I'm just going to say EMA and we're going to add another one, MA. There you go. So next we're going to actually add a question mark. Now this is actually a question mark. This is an operator. This is what we call a, a you know, a 
what is it called? It's called a ternary operator, ternary operator. So this is actually one of the most common things used in PineScript. And uh, I will talk about that later on. Uh, you don't really have to learn it, but you, ju you can just imagine it as something that actually uh, compares uh, like something with each other. Like for example, we're comparing EMA and MA, right? And what we're telling is that if these two cross, because again, we're using the, uh, the TA dot cross, right? So we're saying that if this thing cross, we're gonna print EMA, or we're gonna actually mark EMA, right? And if it doesn't, we we'll just don't do anything. Essentially, what this means is that if you know if this actually this condition is met, uh, mark this right, and if it's not, don't do anything. That's it. So again, when EMA crosses MA, mark this or like plot whatever you're plotting here. If it doesn't, don't do anything. So this is basically the else part of it. If you imagine an if and else statement, but pretty much the same thing here, all right? So that's that. So again, this is not done yet, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually give it a color. So we're gonna give it a color and we're gonna call this color green, let's say, all right? All right, so that's that. And then then one thing we wanna do is we wanna give it a style. So we wanna actually make sure that we know what we're drawing because usually by default, it's gonna be a line. So obviously I don't wanna draw a line. I wanna draw like a point or like something like a marker, right? So this is where the style comes in. So style uh, equals plot style and then we can actually choose whatever we want. The best thing for this situation, because again, you cross, you're marking like a crossing. The best thing is to either do cross actually, or like circle. So I'm just gonna go with the circle, all right? Uh, but yeah, so you can do whatever you want. And then uh, line width, okay, you can do, like it just makes it a little bit thicker. I'm just gonna go five here. So that should do it. So if I actually save this, take a look. We got these dots, see guys? You got these dots. So now when the EMA crosses the MA line, essentially, we get these dots. Now, one of the things you wanna do if you wanna make it super fancy is that you can actually just like um, comment out the lines. So the only thing you see actually is these uh, line, these uh, signs, like, you know, these are these circles. Essentially, like when you look at the like more complicated indicators where they have like these, these buy and sell signals, that's pretty much how they do it. You know, they don't, you don't have to cross the lines because you, you have a lot of values that you can actually display it, but you don't necessarily need to display it, right? So like, you know, this is just how it's gonna work. Essentially, if you, if you, have, if you have a couple of more like more complicated code, we can actually make this a buy and sell signal based on the EMA line. Very simple stuff again, like you can do a lot of interesting stuff with this. But again, uh, I'm just gonna leave it like that. So here you go, guys, this is, our code, you know, like a very simple code that essentially sees the, uh, finds the values and then if there's a cross, it marks it. Very simple stuff. So uh, what I'm gonna do for you guys is I'm going to actually leave the code for you so you can actually download it. It's a text file, so you can actually just like copy it and put it in your own PineScript editor and just edit it and then check it out for yourself. I just wanna make sure you have access to the source because uh, you know you can use it for yourself, you can like play with it, you can actually practice it if you want. So it could be very useful. So definitely check it out. Uh, I hope this was helpful. You know, we used a lot of stuff that we've talked about in the past few uh, sections, you know, such as the variables, like inputs, you know, we talked about the technical, anal technical analysis, of, you know, functions and stuff like that, plot functions, uh, colors and stuff like that. So a lot of stuff that we talked about, we just implemented and it made a pretty simple indicator. So let me know if you have any questions, guys. We're gonna continue, we're gonna do another indica indicator. That one is a little bit more complicated, but you know, again, good information for you to actually process and learn stuff. Let me know if you have any questions. If not, I'll see you in the next one.